He was a German field marshal of World War II. He earned the respect of both his own troops and his enemies. His leadership of German and Italian forces in the North African campaign established him as one of the most able commanders of the war and earned him the nickname Desert Fox. Here are a few facts you didn't know about Irvin Johannes Eugene Rommel. Irvin Rommel was the second of four children. His father, Irvin Rommel Sr., was a teacher and a school administrator and his mother, Helen von Lutz, headed the local government council. Rommel had one older sister and three younger brothers, one of whom died in infancy. At the age of 14, Rommel built a full-scale glider with his friend and was able to fly short distances. He later purchased a motorcycle and upon getting home immediately set about taking it apart and putting it back together. Rommel considered becoming an aeronautical engineer, but at the age of 18 he acceded to his father's wishes and joined the local 124th Württemberg Infantry Regiment in 1910, studying at the Officer Cadet School in Danzig. While at Cadet School, Rommel met his future wife, 17-year-old Lucia Maria Molin. They got married in November 1916 in Danzig. During World War I, Rommel fought in France as well as in the Romanian and Italian campaigns. He gained success leading small groups of men, using tactics such as infiltrating through enemy lines under cover of darkness, moving forward rapidly to a flanking position to arrive at their rear and attacking defenders using the element of surprise. His first combat experience was at the 22nd of August 1914, when catching the French garrison unprepared at the village of Bleed, he and three men engaged the enemy without waiting for the rest of their platoon to arrive. Rommel was often ill while on active duty, particularly with stomach troubles and exhaustion, a problem that manifested itself from the beginning of his career. On September 24th, Rommel was shot in the leg when he engaged several French soldiers armed only with his bayonet. He had run out of ammunition. For this action he was awarded the Iron Cross, second class. Rommel remained with the 124th Regiment until the 1st of October 1920, when he was named Company Commander of the 13th Infantry Regiment in Stuttgart, a post he held with the rank of Captain for the next nine years. His regiment was involved in quelling riots and civil disturbances that were occurring throughout Germany at this time. Whenever possible, he avoided the use of force in these confrontations. Rommel is regarded as having been a humane and professional officer. Orders to kill Jewish soldiers, civilians and captured commandos were ignored. Later in the war, Rommel was indirectly linked to the conspiracy to assassinate Adolf Hitler. Rommel was promoted to General Major on 23rd of August 1939, tasked with guarding Hitler and his field headquarters during the invasion of Poland, which began on the 1st of September. The invasion is considered as the starting point of the World War II. During the war, Rommel was leading his armies in Poland, France, Belgium, North Africa, Italy and Atlantic War, taking part in countless battles and sieges. In battle, Rommel was often directing fire or leading an assault in the hottest point of decision. In addition, Rommel was also the possessor of a great deal of moral courage. He was one of the few generals who had the strength to refuse to carry out one of Hitler's orders. He had little patience for junior officers who did not do their jobs properly. He was not open to objections to his plans and he did not tolerate incompetence. While Rommel developed an admiration for Hitler, he never joined the Nazi party. He refused to permit his son to join the SS. Because Rommel was a national hero, Hitler desired to eliminate him quietly. He forced Rommel to commit a suicide with a cyanide pill in return for assurance that Rommel's family would not be persecuted following his death. He was given a state funeral and it was announced that Rommel had succumbed to his injuries from an earlier strafing of his staff car in Normandy. Following a forced suicide, Rommel emerged as the acceptable face of German militarism, the good German who stood apart from the Nazi regime. What do you think about our pick? Did we say something wrong? 
Subscribe to Fold on Feast for more videos like this and leave a comment saying what you would like to see next. Until next time, goodbye.